I said till death do us part I want to mean it with all of my heart Please be seated We are gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of this company to join together this man and this woman in the sacred estate of matrimony. But why in a church? The bride and groom have chosen to begin their home in God's house as a symbol of their desire to have him in theirs. Why do they want God to be a part of their marriage and to be in their home? Well, I'm answering for them, all right? It's because marriage is not easy. Isn't that true? And it's not easy because of the kind of people that we naturally are. Jeremiah 17:9 says, speaking of man's condition after the fall, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so, apart from Jesus Christ, we are selfish. Apart from Jesus Christ, we are proud. We are arrogant. We're haughty. And we're hot-tempered. But there is a promise in the Bible. In Ezekiel 36, 26, this wonderful promise is given to those who come to Jesus. I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Can you imagine with me an old wagon wheel? Got it pictured clearly in mind? Think of the spokes of that wagon wheel. As one moves towards the center of the wagon wheel, that is the hub, from either spoke, or on any spoke rather, one gets closer to one another. So if that hub was to be Jesus Christ, as we as individuals, and David and Janet, as you as individuals, as you come closer to Jesus, you will become closer to one another. There is much to be said for communication. There is much to be said for spending time with one another. But in the end, all of this is fruitless. And I know this from experience, having counseled many married couples who are in distress. In the end, all these things are important, but the, the most important thing is having Jesus in our hearts. Romans 12.1 tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. David, that's what you need. And Janet, that's what you need. And not because you're different than anybody else, because we all need that renewing power. And the important thing to understand is that we need this renewing power on a daily basis. It's not a once and over sort of thing. But in 1 Corinthians 3.18, it kind of gives us the secret. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of God. And so David and Jan, we have two little secrets here. One is, we are changed by beholding Jesus Christ. So daily, as you open your Bibles separately and you have your uh, personal devotional time, you're actually feeding your marriage, being changed. And then two, notice that it's even by the Spirit of the Lord. So I've made it a practice in my life on a daily basis to ask for the Spirit of God in my heart. Because just as I can eat in the morning and then be hung hungry the next day, so um, I can have the Spirit in my heart one day, but the next day I need it again. 
And so, Jan and David, I hope that, uh, and I pray that you will keep your relationship with Jesus as the center of your marriage and your home. Occasionally, I have uh, talked with a man or a woman who has said something like this, or I've heard it discussed. You know, I'm leaving my husband or my wife because they're just not fulfilling my needs. And while it is important for us to be sensitive to the needs of our spouses and do all within our power to, uh, to show them the love that we promised to when we married, I, I often think of Robert Hickok. Robert Hickok, when he had his second son, soon after he had his second son, his wife was taking the, the little boy, and the little baby, to the... Uh, to the doctor's office, and right in the parking lot of the doctor's office, she fell down. Turned out she had an aneurysm. The doctor came out and uh, saved her life. But from then on, she sat in a nursing home and in a wheelchair. What was significant about Robert, and what has always struck me about that man, and I think of him often, is that he was always faithful and attentive to his wife. He would go and get her and bring her home for visits from the nursing home. He would bring her to church quite often. And he was always careful not to be around other single women unless rumors might start because he didn't want, even want to give the appearance of being unfaithful to his wife. She could meet, really, none of his needs, but he was faithful. And so the secret to a happy marriage is not hoping that our spouse will meet all our needs, but rather, in Philippians 4.19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so, Janet, I'm sure you're very aware of this, but David's going to disappoint you <laughs> at times. And David, why again... Well, I know you're aware of this, but Janet's going to disappoint you at times. But during those times of disappointment, you can turn to your Savior and have his peace, his forgiveness, his forbearance, his patience in your heart. God loves a wedding. The whole idea originated with him when he performed the first wedding ceremony in Eden. God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to himself. God made both man and woman in such a way that neither is quite complete without the other. The creator made Eve from Adam's rib to teach us at least three important lessons. One, it was taken from his side, for woman was to be neither above nor beneath, but to stand by the side of man. Two, the rib was from under his arms, for she was to be protected by him. And three, it was taken from near his heart, for she was to be loved by him. Thus it was that Jesus quoted, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And to this holy estate, these two persons, here pre present, come now to be joined. Now as the bride and groom join hands, I'd like to invite the husbands and wives in the audience to join hands also and to renew their vows as the bride and groom exchange theirs. And so, David. And now, solemnly promising for, before God in the presence of these witnesses, please repeat after me. I, David Melvin White. I, David Melvin White. Take this woman. Take this woman. Jan Don Folkvane. Jan Don Folkvane. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To live together after God's ordinance. To 
live, to live together in God's witness. In the sacred estate of matrimony. In the sacred estate of matrimony. I will love her. I will love her. I will comfort her. I will comfort her. I will honor her. I will honor her. I will cherish her. I will cherish her. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In prosperity or adversity. Prosperity and or adversity. Adversity. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Will keep myself only unto her. Will keep myself only unto her. So long as we both shall live. So long as we both shall live. And Janet, please repeat after me. I, Janet Don Folkvain. I, Janet Don Folkvain. Will take this man, David Melvin White. Will take this man, David Melvin White. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To live together after God's ordinance. To live together after God's ordinance. In the sacred estate of matrimony. The sacred state of matrimony. I will love him. I will love him. I will honor him. I will honor him. And I will cherish him. I will cherish him. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In prosperity or adversity. In prosperity or adversity. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Keep myself only unto him. As long as we both shall live. For as much as David Melvin White and Janet Don Folkvane have consented to be joined together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company and therefore have given and pledged their troth each to the other and have declared the same by joining hands I, as a minister of the gospel by the authority of the law of Alberta, do pronounce that they are husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. David, you may kiss your bride. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for David and for Janet. We thank you for bringing them together in this uh, lonely old world to find uh, comfort and companionship and the warmth of each other. And Father, as they move forward into this life as husband and wife, I pray now for your blessing to be upon them. I pray that your spirit will tug upon their hearts each day, no matter how busy the circumstances may be, to take time to spend with their Lord and Savior, to pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, so that they might, as they have pledged here, be able to make one another happy. We pray for your protection upon them, for your grace upon them, for your spirit upon them, and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen.
forgive me. Yep. I forsake my rest for your happiness till my death I will stand by you. With God as my witness, this vow I will make to have and to hold you, no other to take. For rich or for poor, under sky. So it is my great pleasure to introduce for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. David White. <laughs> 